In this video, I want to show you how to pass error messages from Node.js to the client. And it's pretty quick and easy, but I struggled for a while to figure out how to do this. So we're just going to start with an empty passing hyphen errors folder with nothing in it. And we're going to go ahead and create a front end. So mpx create react app UI. And then we'll create a server as well. And so here I'm just going to do make their server. And then I will go ahead and, oops, I did that in the wrong folder. Darn it. Okay, let's CD passing errors and then make their server. Okay, so now if we ls, oh, I have to hit Y. I forgot about that. I don't know why this error message happens, but oh well. So anyway, we are going to wait for the UI and we'll let's go ahead and work on the, the server in the meantime. So code dot to open up your text editor. And then we can go ahead and start building out our server. We're going to need an index.js file. And then we're going to use express and cores and a few other simple things. So const express equals require express and then HTTP. and app cores and then we're going to create a server so const server equals http dot create server app and we're just going to give a port of 3001 and then I don't think we're actually going to use environment variables. So app.use and oops, we're going to be using the cores to basically say, hey, allow this localhost 3000. So it basically just says, hey, allow HTTP localhost 3000 to make requests. And this doesn't look right. Okay, so allow this URL to make requests to the server. And then we just need to make a simple test route. So app.get test function rec and res. And then here we're just going to say rest.send. Yo, it works. Okay, and then we can turn on the server with server.listen port and Okay, so that should work. Now we just need to install these packages. So we need to install Okay, let's go into our server folder and we'll say well let's do npm init hyphen y to create the package.json file and then npm install express and cores and I think that's all we need the other stuff I believe is built in okay so nodemon index.js to start the server and so now we just need to set up our app and make sure that we have a working request. So CDUI, and we are going to need Axios, and I'm going to use a package called React Query. Okay, so that's done. Let's go ahead and start up the UI. So that should be good. And now we can create our UI. And so in the index file, we're going to need a little bit of setup for React query. So we're just going to say import query client and query client provider from react-query. 
and then const query client equals new query client. This is basically just setting up context for the entire app so we're able to send queries and mutations throughout the app. So query client provider client equals query client. Okay, so this wraps our entire app and allows us to use React Query to query the server. So now in our app.js file, we can set up a simple query. And so I'm going to say import Axios from Axios. And if you're using GraphQL, you probably don't have to worry about this because, well, you probably wouldn't be watching this video because Apollo pretty much handles error messages for you. And I'm not sure about Relay, but anyway, we'll do, we'll make a function for calling that test route that we have in the server. So async function get, get data, and then return await axios.get localhost 3000 and the test route. So it's going to return that from this get data and then we'll make a hook. So function use get data. And then we're going to say, we're just going to get is loading data and error from the query or from react query. And so basically react query just handles this axios.get request for us. So anyway, use query. And we're going to pass in this function. So get data. And then, well, we don't actually need this object here yet. So I'm just going to keep it like this for now. And then I'm going to say return is loading data and error. OK, so now we can call this hook in our app. And then we can get the data from this test route. So const is loading data and error equals use get data. Okay, so now I'm gonna just say console.log is loading and then console.log data, data. Okay, so save and yet use query is not defined, so we need to import that. So import use query from react hyphen query. Okay, so that appears to work. So I'm gonna right click and inspect and go to the dev tools or console. And what do we get? Localhost route test is not found, okay. Okay, and we're actually supposed to be using 3001 because this is a request to the server and the server is on 3001. So if we save that, then hopefully we'll get something. So refresh and we get data, data, yo, it works. And that's what's being sent from the server. So index, yo, it works. So the problem here is if we want to send an error message. If we send an error message, it's not going to work quite as well. So let's try it out. If we do something like rest.status. Well, and, so what I was doing for the longest time is I'd just be doing status200.send, and then I'd send some error message. But you don't want to send a success message when there's an error. So we can do status 400 and say, this is a custom error message, yeah. So save, and then because we're passing a 400 error code, 
then it's going to actually give us an on error. And so if you, this will depend on, there. there's a lot of programs that have a similar setup as this, but with React Query, we can have this on error or on success thing. And it's the same with Apollo. Apollo has a very similar setup in GraphQL, but let's go ahead and look at this here. So if you add a comma here and you can say basically, here's what happens on success. You can say console.log success message data, and then here's on error. And then I can say error console.log error message error. And so this, and then there's also here in this, in this use query, we can actually also return is success and is error. And we can use, this is a, a react query thing, but we can use that to display error messages. So, is error. We're not actually going to use that yet, but let's just go ahead and save this and then see this stuff here. So if I go back to our app here, we get is loading, is loading, is loading. I think it takes a while because it's a get request. I probably should have done a post, but anyway, so we get this error message error request failed with status code 400. And I don't want that, I want the actual message. And so if I do error.message, still not gonna work. So save, refresh. I'm just getting this bad request and then error message request failed with status 400. And so long story short, the, the secret here is that you want to use not error.message, but error.response.data. So that's pretty much, I probably could have condensed this down into like a 30 second tutorial, but error.response.data is what you want. So save and then refresh. Well, I don't have to refresh, but. We get error message. This is a custom error message. Yeah, and that is what we have sent from the server. So this is a, an Axios thing, so you may want to check some information. You know, whether you if you're using something else other than Axios, then check their documentation for you know what you should be looking for. But with Axios specifically, it's error.response.data. So hopefully that is helpful, and then you can also use that here in this error as well. So if I say console.log error in app error question mark dot response question mark dot data and i'm just doing that because i'm lazy and i want to hurry up with this tutorial but we'll save it and then refresh error in app undefined undefined and error in app this is a custom error message yeah and then error message so yeah, pretty much that's how you get an error message sent from the server to the client. And just for the sake of completion, here's the error handling page for Axios. They really don't say much, but they do show if there's an error dot response, then you get, you can Google or you can console.log the response.data, response.status and response.headers. So hopefully that is helpful. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when we release new tutorials. Also be sure to like the video and leave a comment to let us know what you think. Lastly, check out the link or links in the description. We usually create a blog post to go with the tutorial and we might have a newsletter or course or something to check out as well. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.